Well, let's return to our main story now. The energy regulator Ofgem has announced that the price cap, that's the maximum amount a supplier can charge for one unit of energy, will rise by 10% from October. So what that means is an increase to 1717 for an average household. Use more, obviously, use more energy and your bills will be higher. Let's speak now to the chief executive of Ofgem, Jonathan Brealy, thank you very much for your time this morning, Mr. Brealy. You'll be well aware, people are very interested in these rises. Do you want to just take us through the basics of the increases that you've outlined? Yeah, and look, I'd like to start by saying, I think as Ben said earlier in, in, in your programme, you know, I talk to customers on a regular basis and I know this is not welcome news for many households and I know many households still struggle with all of their bills, including energy. But what we're announcing today is a 10% increase in the price cap that's the regulated price that we, we lay out that says that's the maximum a company can charge if you're not in the wider market, if you're not on, for example, a fixed deal. Now, the reason we're making that change is those price increases are driven by the increase in cost in the international gas that we buy. And as an energy system, we spend a great deal of our sort of proportion of our bill on gas to provide our electricity and our heating. And until that changes, we will be in a similar position. But look, if you're a customer and you are worried about this, there are things you can do. First of all, make sure you get access to all the benefits that you're entitled to. The government said earlier this week that almost a million pensioners, for example, could claim pension credit and are not doing so. That not only unlocks help with your energy bill, but un unlocks help with wider cost of living payments, for example. Second, do talk to your energy company. Your energy company has strict rules they need to follow to make sure they are giving you help and support. For example, they should be flexible about how you can pay if you're struggling to pay. And finally, do make sure that you have a look in the market once more. So do shop around. For the first time, I think, since the crisis, we are beginning to see some good value deals emerge. And we think you could save around £100 compared to this regulated price if we shop around. Now, of course, like anything, like your mortgage, you have to choose as to whether you're going to fix your energy price or you're going to keep it variable. But there are some deals that are worth looking at. Can you do a couple of simple explainers for us? Someone listening to you this morning, as you said, they might be uh, wearyingly thinking, I've just listened to the boss of Ofgem saying 10% more. Ouch. Um, can you explain to us in the clearest possible terms why that 10% figure can't be 6%? Why can it not be 8%? Why can you not just fix that price lower? Well, the main reason is that the price cap is designed in a way that says, look, energy companies can recover fair costs and a small profit, but no more than that. And when those costs change, those costs unfortunately do feed through to the bill. Now, as a regulator, as you can imagine, we do everything we can to bear down on those costs. So we are continually challenging the companies and saying, can you do things cheaper? So, for example, right now, we're looking at the ways company, companies operate themselves and we're saying, well, what is the cheapest and most effective way you can make sure that customers get the cheapest energy they can possibly get? But the truth is, when something happens internationally in the international markets, across the world, the gas price goes up, then that unfortunately gets fed through to our bills. And the truth is that will continue to happen until we build a new energy system. So we are very excited by the government's new target of building a 2030 electricity system that is net zero, not only because we're enthusiastic about climate change, but more importantly, this will lead us to a more stable position for customers and we won't see this merry-go-round we're on with the international gas markets right now. Now, you are not responsible, I think people understand that, uh, for government decisions about something like winter fuel payments, for example. But inevitably, caught up in the cost of energy will be those people, and it, it, you'll know this very well, but just to try and be clear to people, if you're over 80 and uh, because of the recent announcement you will not get a winter fuel payment, that's going to cost you £300 this winter. That's £300 you will not get that you might previously have got. Now, with the announcement today, with the 10% increase, there will clearly be an add-on which is more. Now, how mindful are you of those people who are going to be, if you like, hit with a double whammy coming this winter? Look, I talk to a whole range of customers. I talk to elderly customers. I talk to customers in really difficult circumstances. So I know 
this is going to be very tough. And, you know, we don't make the decision that you've made and we don't have to face the fiscal trade-offs that the government faces. But look, that's why it's so important. If you think you might be entitled to pension credit, if you think there's a chance, then please do talk to the government and see if you're entitled to that because that gets you that winter fuel payment again. It also gets you access to further help and support and actually much bigger support on the cost of living. The fact that 880,000 people aren't claiming is really important. There's 880,000 people out there who could do a lot better and that's what we want to promote and make sure people understand. More broadly though, your point is right. As we go through this transition, as we change that infrastructure, there are going to be a group of people that continue to struggle while we remain subject to the gas price. All of us, government, Ofgem, the sector and consumer groups need to work as hard as we can to protect those vulnerable groups. We have high expectations of the industry. We are implementing rules and following up those rules to make sure those rules are followed. But there is more for all of us to do and that includes the regulator and that includes the government. Uh, one of the fixed costs uh, is the standing charges. We've spoken many times about this in the past. Uh, people are increasingly frustrated, sometimes angry, about the, the fact that that's not changing. So typically, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, 60p a day for electricity, 31p a day for gas. That's a standing charge. You pay it anyway. Are you changing that? If not, why not? Well, today we have a, basically a consultation that sets out the choices. So we're now saying, here's how we could change it. And in a sense, we've identified the two big parts of the standing charge that are driving up those costs. One is the operating costs, the way the companies run themselves. And the second is the cost of the network. Now, what we're saying is we can make a change. You know, we, we've laid out a series of options to do so. But look, if we do so, the problem that we still have, that we want to talk to the government and the sector about, is there are a group of people who have high energy needs. So when we move from that fixed rate to that unit rate, their energy bills go up. So we could be making some of the people who struggle the most with their energy bills worse off. And again, that's a conversation we want to have together. We understand the strength of public feeling. We have absolutely heard the 30,000 to 40,000 responses that we got back. And we want to make sure that we respond to that. But in doing so, we don't want any unintended consequences. We don't want to leave some of the absolutely worse off even worse off in the future. And that's a conversation we want to have with the sector and indeed with the government. Do you want to give me a, a sense of what you say you have, what, 30 or 40,000 consultations? Is there a theme developing there? Oh, without a doubt, people are saying that they don't like the standing charge as is. Some have asked for it to come down, some have asked for it to be abolished completely. But what we've got to make sure as a regulator is that we are fair to everyone. So, for example, it's not unified amongst the consumer groups that we should do this. Citizens Advice have urged us to be cautious when we think about this. And groups that represent disabled customers have been very clear. They're uncomfortable with this. And that's because those charities know that their clients, the people they work for, may well be worse off. So we've just got to tread carefully, but we've got options. We want to talk with them just as widely as we did in the earlier consultation, and we'll be coming out with firm decisions by the end of the year. And can you cast your mind forward, because it's already been reported, sure. you tell me, uh, that the next time that you announce an energy cap, which I think is January, uh, it will go up again. What have you got to say about that? Look, I'd be very cautious about those predictions at this time. So the thing we know about the gas market is that it is almost impossible to predict. And I have seen those predictions be not hundreds of pounds out, but thousands of pounds out for the average customer in the last few years. So all we can say now is we have the price cap today. We will keep doing the work that we do. We will keep bearing down on costs. But I'd be cautious looking too far forward because right now we simply don't know. But well, what we you understand, say... Mr. Really, if I push you on that one, because sure. I appreciate you, you don't know what's going to happen in the marketplace. But those people who are gulping at their 10% rise today might want some reassurance from you that it wouldn't be another 10% in January or that it might at best stay level. W what kind of reassurance can you give people? Well, look, I can't predict that future gas price, so I can't say what the price will be in January. But what I do know, the best judgment we have is that this situation of being on the volatile, subject to the volatile gas markets, is something that may last a long time. And that's why we need to work with the government, with the sector, to protect vulnerable customers this winter. But we need something more sustained and more strategic. What I don't want to be doing over the next few years is continuing to make announcements like this, but not having a strong enough store on how we look after the most poor. Understood. So, so if, if, I'm, if I could praise you, what you're saying is, if, if you're thinking it's a bit alarming, the prices are going up, get used to it. 
Well, my, my message is simple, is we are going to be in this world until we build out of it, until we build different infrastructure that gets us a different energy system. What we all need to do is to make the best of the circumstances we're in and look after the most vulnerable customers. Jonathan Brearley, uh, Chief Executive of Gem, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you.